right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh boy. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to everyone across the globe. I want to say happy Passover to each and every one of you all across the globe. So I'm going to be here with you guys until 4 p.m. today. And the topic is, uh, you know, me speaking on the Passover and how important it was that uh, Christ went to the cross and what it's all about. So I have literally one hour to go into all of that with some music in the mix. So I'm excited. So I'd ask you guys to please grab hold of uh, your Holy Scriptures, Bible, your good book. Grab a book pad, pen, pencil. Take some awesome notes. And, um, you know, invite family and friends to tune on in. Because we need to know what this Passover is all about, right? So, I'm your host, Juliet Henry, once again. And, um, yeah, let's talk about the Passover. So, with that said, I want to go you know, um, right in to some music here, you know, no one had just started and so on. Yes. But this give people time to, you know, get prepared and all of that cool stuff because there's so much to be discussed today. All right. And, um, we serve a mighty God and we want our father to know, you know, father, we praise you and we thank you. And Lord, you are mighty. So, uh, make sure I stay locked on. And uh, don't go anywhere. You're tuning in right here to say amen with your host, Julia Henry. That's right. Come on, y'all. We serve a mighty God. Indeed. Oh, man. Yes. And you know what? I'm going to rock this song again because I just want the world to know how grateful we are to our father for being so awesome and so mighty and and consistent with his children and always always wanted wanting that expected end for us because it, it, it's already prepared you see and um part of this whole amazing amazing journey man is that we can have eternal life isn't that powerful right so okay so we're speaking about the, the Passover and, um, you know, some might say, well, you know, the Passover came, some people celebrated at, um, different times. And I'm going to touch on scripture in, uh, the book of Daniel, where he said that times and dates and so on is going to change. But you know, what doesn't change how the moon operates, you see how, how, uh, uh, um, those signs and wonders that the Lord have in place for us to follow to know the times that we are in okay and some say it came at this particular time but when you follow um how how it's going the moon and when the full moon and this is what the bible when you read it they don't go off of um the um the i'm sorry you guys they don't go off of the the calendar they go off today they go off of the lunar calendar, a 28 day uh, uh, cycle. All right. So this is how powerful the scriptures are. And um, yeah, so we're going to go into the scriptures today. And uh, let me see. Let's go to, I want to go right on in. And, but let me say this quickly. If I'm in the Old Testament for that new person, um, uh, you know, I'm going to say uh, Old Testament or I'm in the New Testament because most Bibles have the old and the new. They don't have the Apocrypha in it unless you buy the full 1611. So if I'm in the Old Testament, I'll say I'm in the Old Testament, uh, um, Leviticus chapter 1 and verse 18. And, you know, go in the book of Leviticus uh, chapter 1 and verse 18. If I'm in the New Testament, I'll say, you know, check out. Uh, uh, the book of Revelations, chapter 14 and verse 12. So you know where to go. Okay. I, I enjoy saying this because you have to be patient and have to teach. And we all have to be disciplined to, to be that humble, to, to, to start, you know, um, at the rudiment. Okay. 
So I want us to go into the book of first Corinthians. Let's go there. Uh, chapter, let's go to chapter five, first Corinthians chapter five. Oh man. I love hearing the turn on my page, man. Ah, <laughs> all right. So first Corinthians chapter five and verse seven, it says purge out therefore the old leaven that you may be a new lump as ye are unleavened for even Christ our Passover is sanctified for us amen did you hear that part for even Christ our Passover is sanctified for us how is Christ our Passover what took place with Christ what took place well let me make mention of what took place christ went to the cross for us he was crucified he died on the cross and he came for that purpose to show us how to live how to treat one another how to not sin you see because you can live a life and and strive to do uh, what God wants you to do and actually do it and, and be disciplined in doing it. Okay? Christ told us to be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect. So if our Lord and Savior is saying, hey, be perfect, guess what? You can be perfect regardless of what man says. Because the Bible teaches us, let God be true and every man a liar. And that's Romans uh, 3 and 3. Okay? Going down. You know what? Let's go there. Let's go there. Hold on to Corinthians. All right. So bookmark that. Let's go to, um, yeah. Romans in the new, uh, Testament chapter three and verse three. So it says, but what if some did not believe shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Meaning if they don't believe what God said, does that mean it's not going to work? God, let me, let me see. God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. So let God's words be true. Before Christ came, um, guess what was going on? It was, you know, guess what? There was preparation. When you go into the book of Isaiah 55, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. And this was a prophecy. Uh, 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 coming down the line speaking about Christ because Christ was there in the beginning with the Lord you see and and who you think that angel was that passed through when you read the scriptures huh that took out the Egyptians for the children of Israel who do you think that was you see you got to go back and read for those who don't engage and understand something God is real he is not playing so let's understand what the Passover is. And then, you know, just speak about, um, let me bookmark my, uh, okay. Speak a little bit about what, what it's all about. Let's go to um, the book of Exodus. I'm trying to break it down real quick in the spirit of Christ. Exodus chapter 23. I think that's the one I want. And, um, verse 15 let me turn it uh and 15 okay so hear this the in the bible the lord have laws about appointed feasts now he have high holy days and one of them is passover one of them is hanukkah you see and he, he said three times a year the males must celebrate this must he didn't ask he said you must okay but i digress so when we go to exodus in the old Te uh, testament chapter 23 and verse 15 it says um let me go up to 14 three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days, that's Passover, as I commanded thee in the time appointed of the month Abib. So right now we are in that month of Abib. 
For in it thou camest out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. So when you read the scripture, the Lord brought the children of Israel out from 400 plus years of slavery. 400 years of hard bonded slavery, beatings and, 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 and that kind of thing. And, and at that time, thus far, that was like the worst slavery to go through. And the Lord brought the children of Israel out of that heavy bondage. And when he brought them out, uh, he gave the laws to Moses and Moses read it to the children of Israel. And meaning man, woman, and child. And when he did that, he gave the laws, he gave the high holy days, he gave the blessings, and he gave the curses. If you do this, blessings will chase you down. You can't stop it. Blessings is chasing you. Every time you think you can get away from this blessing, it leads you. You say, you know what? Instead of going left, I'm going to go right. Not knowing blessing was already appointed to go right. You're thinking you're trying to do or beat you know, the blessing, but it's already there because the Lord called it in. You're doing what he said to do. But when you choose to disobey God, knowing and unknowingly, guess what? There's a price to pay for that. So guess what? The curses are going to pursue you just like the blessing equally would. So poverty will be with you. Sickness will be with you. A broken family will be with you. All of these things will be with you. And, and you can't stop it until you turn back to the Lord. You see, but with the blessings, you're smiling, you're happy, you're, you're thriving. But with the curses, there's pain, conflict, sickness, all of that. Who wants that? So the children of Israel, the nation of Israel was brought up out of Egypt. And the Lord said to three times, thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. So there's three high holy days. That's why it's important to go back and read what the laws are that the Lord is speaking about. And you hear some folks, well, you know, that stuff is done away with. No, it's not. Go back and read the Bible. So it go on to say, and the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labor, which thou hast sown in the field and the feast of in gathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labor out of the fields three times in the year, all thy mail shall appear before the Lord. So these are the three high holy days. So we're speaking about Passover. So Passover, uh, when you read the Holy Scriptures is when, again, the Lord brought the children of Israel out from heavy bondage, gave them, um, he established the laws through Moses to govern them. And they had, you know, judges among them. They had uh, um, you know, rule and law, just like any society. When you look at society around the world, guess what? They didn't just get that just from anywhere. They got it from how the Lord did things and they followed certain principles and so on. So during that time, we know the story. Pharaoh did not want to let the children go. He was like, nah, son. You know, he's not letting them go. He have all this free labor. He could do whatever he want to them. But you see, when God have a special people, you see, when God have a blessed people, whether they know it or not, he is going to stand for his people. And yes, he would judge those of his people that are not obeying him. You're going to get a whooping because you are special unto the Lord. And they came out of Egypt and Moses established, reestablished the laws. People think only when Moses came is when the laws came on the scene. No, he reestablished it because going back to Adam and Eve, they had the laws too. Remember the, the sacrifice that, that, uh, um, Abel cap. What do you think that was? You see? So the Passover is giving homage to the Lord. Because he fought for you. He was before you. So who could be against you? And when the Passover, it's a, it's a seven day uh, period. There's certain things you eat, certain things you don't eat. And, and you know, it replenishes your body spiritually. It, it replenishes you. And when you, the Lord wants 
the children to remember the hard bondage that they went through. Aside from it also being that high holy day. And when, I, you know, I love reading about the Passover because I just, <laughs> the way Pharaoh acted, the plagues hit him. He thought he was above God. You see, but God lifted up Pharaoh when you read in the New Testament he lived up Pharaoh to throw him down he hardened his heart what does that mean well Pharaoh thought he was above all things and he thought you know uh, uh, he was above God but he didn't understand something about the children of Israel once they start obeying the Lord now guess what that 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 uh, a connection that he had with controlling them, that contract is now broken because now they went back to the contract of what the Lord prepared for them, obeying and doing well and loving on one another. So Pharaoh didn't have that fight anymore. He already lost, but he didn't know. But his heart was so full of pride. And do you know who I am? I am Pharaoh and I'm not gonna let these people go. Moses went back let my people go Aaron speaking to him for him excuse me because the Lord said to Moses you are a God to Pharaoh so guess what he didn't speak directly to Moses because Aaron was there and Moses would tell Aaron what he wants Pharaoh to know and he would tell him when you read the Bible amen so Pharaoh didn't want to who is your God he said that I are to bow down to for y'all are you kidding me my god have me in control not realizing is the god of abraham isaac and jacob that had him there because his children wouldn't listen you see so pharaoh went on and on so let me read that for you because someone might say pharaoh said that Let's go into the book of um, Exodus. Uh, um, Exodus chapter 5. Let's go there. I love this part. Exodus uh, chapter 5 and verse 2. Let me go from 5 and 1. It says, And afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? Are you seeing this? So this is Pharaoh in his pride, in his glory. I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And they said, the God of the Hebrews had met with us. Let us go, we pray thee. So here they pleaded with Pharaoh in the name of the Lord. And Pharaoh straight out let them, let them know. Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? Are you kidding me? They're doing everything I say to do. And this was the pride of Pharaoh's heart. He said, I know not the Lord, meaning I don't know the Lord. I am God on earth. And he would not let them go to have a base unto the Lord. You see, Israel started to make that change. They started to come back to rule and law. They started to come back to dignity. You see, come back to morals. To come, they came back also, you know, to, to, to be in one unit. And Pharaoh didn't understand that. So these different plagues that hit him, they were hit economically. Because when you hear the frogs and, and, and the grasshoppers, those things are metaphors for things that actually happen. So if the children of Israel stopped buying certain products, guess what that did? That crippled a part of the economy because who's buying it? They started making their own clothes. They started shopping from one another. They started helping each other build. You, you, you understand this? You see, this one didn't have food. We all pitched in. This one didn't have a, a place. Listen, we have six bedrooms. Let's move this one and this one. You got to go deeper into the scripture to get this. Amen. So 
Some think it was really grasshopper, but they represent, it's a metaphor. They represent certain things that took place in the society. So again, Pharaoh's like, I ain't letting go nobody. I am not in hip hop term, y'all. All right. <laughs> Pharaoh like, nah, son, it ain't happening, captain. So he refused to let them go. So what happened next? Well, we're going to get to that. All right. We're going to get to that. And, um, you know, we're going to we're going to go on. So I'm, I'm here for one hour, but we're going to enjoy this time. And I'm going to bring out as much of the story as possible. Amen. So uh, we have to understand that there's a God that's bigger than you and I. 